Hi everybody, Steve here in Fairmount, Indiana, at James Dean's gravesite. I think it's around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun just came out. It's been pouring down rain for the last few hours on my trip up here from Kentucky. I can't believe that I'm actually here. It's really surreal when you visit the final resting places of certain people. I'm also going to visit the James Dean Gallery, which is about a mile or two south of the cemetery on the same road as the cemetery in downtown Fairmount. And just a few blocks further south is the Fairmont Historic Museum, where I'll show you the statue of Garfield dressed as James Dean in Rubble Without a Cause. I'm also going to visit Dean's birthplace and his mother's gravesite. They're both in Marion, Indiana, which is just about 10 minutes north of Fairmount. And if you watch all the way to the end, I'll share with you a couple of other James Dean historic destinations as well. Thanks for joining me on another trip to visit the most memorable cemeteries, memorials, and gravesites. I just exited Highway 69, heading north from Indianapolis, and it took me a little over an hour to get here. Now I'm heading west, and I think Fairmount is just about five miles or so straight ahead. I just arrived in Fairmont, Indiana, and this is one of the cutest towns I've ever seen. And the cemetery is really close to downtown, which I didn't realize. It's been pouring down rain the entire afternoon. And I'm heading to my hotel and I thought, well, since the rain stopped for a few minutes, I thought, well, let me go ahead and just see if I can find the cemetery before I head to, over to the hotel. Because it's also supposed to rain tomorrow. I'm really surprised how large this cemetery is too. Look how large this is for a tiny little town. I mean, it seems pretty tiny. Maybe it's not as tiny as it looks. So I'm just gonna drive all the length of the cemetery. In pictures and videos I've seen before, it always looks really small. But look at this. Unfortunately, I'm facing into the sun, so Sure, it doesn't. Uh, the light is not the greatest. There's quite a few people here, but you know, it is Memorial Weekend, so I think there will be a lot of people here just because of that. Okay, I didn't really see an entrance except for maybe where that lady was blocking the, the entrance there, so I'll just go in here. Okay, I just pulled in at the northern end of the cemetery, and I believe. James Dean's grave is up at this end, according to my GPS, if it's accurate. Well, I'm glad even though these are dirt roads, there's some gravel here, so it's not too, not too muddy. A lot of people here, quite a few people here, but again, it's Memorial Day weekend, so that's to be expected. Well, here it is. And there are quite a few white stones nearby, and I think they probably added these because I only see them right here by James Dean's grave. And I bet it's because everyone parks in the grass on top of people's graves. Looks like there are other people here to visit his grave too. Hello. Hello. Definitely left lots of stuff. Are you guys local or from out of town? I'm local. He's out of state. Oh, okay. So you've been here many times for I haven't, actually. I'm no? in Anderson, so... You're what? From Anderson, oh, so it's okay. not super close, not that, oh, okay. no. close enough. I arrived a few minutes ago, and right behind me, someone pulled up, and they were also coming to, to visit and take pictures with uh, James Dean's headstone. And it's, it is interesting to see how many people have chipped away pieces of the headstone. I just don't get that, really. Why not just take a picture or a video? And it's nice to see that he's here with family, with the Winslows, Marcus and Hortense, and also his father and his father's second wife, Wynton and Ethel. Dean's mother is buried in Marion, Indiana, which is just about 10 minutes north of the cemetery here. I think she's buried next to her parents at Grant Memorial Park, and I plan to visit her gravesite tomorrow. And here come some more cars. Well, I've only been here about 10 minutes, and already 
about a half a dozen fans have come and stopped by to take pictures and to remember and to talk and it's a good thing I wasn't planning to just come here and be by myself in solitude because I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> this is a very, very popular place to be. And actually a couple of the people that have come by have been locals. And Eddie, I think Eddie Lee was her name, very sweet woman, huge fan. She said she lives just, uh, I think, 30 minutes away and she's never been here. She said she never realized you could visit uh, someone's gravesite. And I think there's a lot of people like that. A lot of people just don't know you can or wouldn't even really think about doing it. She's been to his festival, the festival that they have here each year, but she's never been to the, uh, the gravesite. So I think she was pretty happy to be here. I just took a picture of them together. I'm curious how many of you have been here to James Dean's grave. I'm guessing that quite a few of you have. I know most YouTube vloggers have been here. I've seen so many. That's why I wasn't sure if I would even upload this, if anyone would even be interested in seeing, since, seeing it, since I'm sure you've seen everyone else's videos. But I still wanted to come. It's different to go somewhere in person. It's one thing to see a destination like this on a video. It's quite another to actually be here in person. So even if I'm the only one who watches this, I still wanted to upload it, even if it's just for myself. I'm a little surprised to see a golf ball here. He did play the guitar, so I can see the, the pick there. And this looks like, looks like John Lennon. I was thinking that was a Ouija, sort of a Ouija board thing, and maybe it is. Maybe that's not John Lennon, but it kind of looks like him. It's always interesting to see what people leave at grave sites. And look at all the lipstick marks on his headstone. I wonder whose grave site receives more kisses, Marilyn Monroe's or James Dean's? What do you think? Have any of you kissed either of their headstones? I don't know if I ever noticed this before. Maybe I did and I just forgot, but James Dean was born a few years before my mom. I think he just, because he died so young, we all think of him as just ageless and timeless. He was just frozen in time as a young person, and we don't really think of him. I mean, he would be, he would be in his 80s now. I knew that Fairmount was the hometown of James Dean, but I had no idea that it was also the hometown of Jim Davis, who created the cartoon character Garfield, and also the CBS news reporter Phil Jones. And apparently it's also home to the state softball champs, the Madison Grant Lady Argyles. As I was walking over here to take a picture of this sign, I noticed another headstone with the name Winslow. This is the third one in the cemetery. So I'm wondering if these are, these Winslows are also related to James Dean. Now just north of the cemetery, almost next door, is Carter's Motors Indiana Motorcycles, where James Dean reportedly purchased his very first motorcycle. You can see the cemetery from here and you can walk to his grave in probably five minutes. And next door to Carter's Motors is the church he attended. And the church is just down the street from the Winslow Farm where he grew up. And then just right up there on the left hand side, that's the Winslow Farm. And this is the Winslow Farm. This is where he lived when he was growing up with the his uncle and aunt. And now, according to Dave at the museum, the James Dean Museum downtown, his cousin Marcus still lives here. I'm just going to turn around here. I don't want to bother them. That's probably him out there, or maybe a cousin or something, out there mowing the lawn.
Isn't that beautiful? It's still so beautiful. They really have kept it up really nicely. There are many famous photos of James Dean standing here in front of the mailbox, in front of the house, with the barn behind him in the distance. They're copyrighted, so I'm not going to show them here. You can Google them and find them online, if you haven't already seen them. Sitting here in my car, in the driveway of James Dean's former home, is very surreal. It's even more surreal than standing at his gravesite. It really does seem like time has just stood still. This house looks almost exactly like it did in the photos when James Dean was standing here more than 60 years ago. Now I'm going to head back south toward the cemetery. And about a mile or so past the cemetery is downtown Fairmount. The street that I'm driving on is South 150 East. And just at the south end of the cemetery, the name of the street changes to North Main Street. So I was really surprised to discover that the house he grew up in, the church he attended, the cemetery where he's buried, his gallery on Main Street downtown, and the famous landmark downtown buildings where he was photographed are all located on the very same street, just within a few miles of each other. There's another famous picture of James Dean standing in the cemetery where he's now buried just a few years before he died. He's standing in front of the headstone of someone who shares his last name. So even James Dean visited cemeteries while he was alive. And I'm just guessing that he would probably find it pretty cool that millions of people have visited his gravesite since he died. I've seen lots of videos from YouTubers who have visited the James Dean Gallery, Museum, and Gift Shop here. But I don't recall any of them mentioning that the cemetery where he's buried is just up the street about a mile or so. You can actually walk there from here. And since so many YouTubers have been here already, I'm just gonna go inside and show you some of the highlights, just in case you haven't seen those other videos. The collection on display here of James Dean, memorabilia, collectibles, and artifacts is very impressive. The gallery and museum is free, and I think they make their money from donations and the purchase of gifts. So I'm gonna make a donation, and I'm gonna buy a t-shirt. As I'm walking around, I'm listening to some of the coolest music I've heard in years. In fact, some of these songs I haven't heard since I was a kid, back in the early 1960s. The songs are being played on an internet radio station called doowopcafe.com. Unfortunately, it's copyrighted, so I have to remove the background music and replace it with this copyright and royalty-free music from YouTube. But it's so cool to be listening to the same music that James Dean was listening to back in the 1950s before he died. And here's a miniature statue of Dean from his 1954 New York play, The Immoralist. Here's one of those photos that I was talking about earlier with James Dean and his young cousin Marcus in front of the house. And this is the original gate from the movie Rebel Without a Cause. And look at this collection of James Dean buttons. And Dean certainly helped make the black leather jacket popular back in the day. So I'm only showing you just a few highlights. There's so much more here to see. So if you come in person, make sure and allow lots of time to see everything. So just across the street and up a couple of blocks toward downtown is this James Dean Memorial Park. And the artist who created this sculpture is the same artist who created the exact sculpture that I visited a while back at the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles or in Hollywood. You may remember this, uh, this bust. That's pretty cool. So I guess he's... Uh, he comes back here and is a part of the, uh, the annual festival. I'll add a link at the end of this video if you'd like to see my visit to his bust at Griffith Observatory in Hollywood and also to his crash site memorial in Central California, if you haven't already seen that video. They've done a nice job by creating this little park with these benches where you can come and sit and reflect and remember James Dean. Now back on the other side of the street, and then about two blocks south 
from this park is another famous James Dean landmark. Fans will recognize this iconic Fairmount Bank building as a location where Dean posed for one of his most famous photos. And on this street here, just a block east, is another James Dean Museum. And look at the date up there, 1889, Fairmont Bank. So this is the Fairmont Historic Museum, or Historical Museum, and not only do they have a, a James Dean exhibit here, they also have this Garfield exhibit. So let's go take a look. If you happen to be a James Dean fan and a Garfield fan, you'll definitely want to come here to the Fairmont Historical Museum because both the creator of Garfield and James Dean were Fairmont natives. And you probably can see that Garfield here is dressed like James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. Isn't that cool? It says J.W. Patterson House, built in 1888, Listed November 14th, 1979, is in place on the National Register of Historic Places. Now I'm going to head to my hotel in Gas City, which is located about 5 to 10 miles northeast of downtown Fairmount. And then tomorrow I'll head to Dean's birthplace and his mom's gravesite in Marion, Indiana, which is about 10 miles northwest of Gas City. So I was expecting. Gas City to be a little bit more of a town, but it looks more like a truck stop, which is fine. But since it actually has hotels here, and Fairmont didn't have hotels, or at least none that were listed online, I just thought this would be a little bit bigger, but it seems a lot smaller than Fairmont. It does have a gas station though, and a Burger King, so you know, maybe there's more to the town. Maybe this is the outskirts of town, but this is my hotel. Super 8, look at this. Out kind of like in the fields. It's pretty cool, pretty different. It doesn't really look like much, but it's pretty new. So for those of you who like to travel, I'll show you what it looks like inside. Well, this is pretty disappointing. This is my third day in Fairmont, Indiana. And I was hoping that maybe by the third day the sun would come out, but I guess I'm not meant to have any uh, sunshine here in uh, Fairmount. When I arrived, it was raining. Yesterday, I woke up to a major thunder and lightning storm and rain just pouring down. So another uh, really nice room, very comfortable. In fact, I stayed here two nights here in uh, here at the Super 8 in Gas City, just right off of the Highway 69. Very nice, very comfortable. I'd definitely stay here again. In fact, I stayed two nights, and I would definitely stay longer if I if I had the time, and if the weather were better. I think it came to around um, eighty nine dollars with tax. So, you know, not too bad. I mean, not great. I mean, that's still at the very high end of what I've been paying on this trip. In the beginning, in the western states, I was paying forty, fifty, sixty dollars a night plus tax here in the more in the midwest almost in the east i would say indianapolis to me that seems almost east and tennessee much higher prices much higher gas prices much higher hotel prices but on average i think this trip i've probably i'm probably on average spending around 75 dollars a night so maybe a little bit more than i was hoping i thought maybe you know, since I was going to the Midwest and, you know, in very small towns that I'd be paying closer to, you know, $40, $50 a night, but it's, uh, it's actually been much more. Everything's more expensive these days, I guess. And I'll give you a, a tour like I like to do of my hotel rooms. This is a really large bathroom. Look at this. This is a pretty new hotel here. They didn't have, their breakfast wasn't as nice as the breakfast of the Super 8 in, in Central City. That was really nice. That was the nicest one so far, but you know, not bad. They didn't have the eggs or bacon or sausage, but they had everything else. So I'm getting ready to head out, and I thought I would do a few more hours of sightseeing here, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see much in this fog. But I'm going to give it a try anyway, because there's a few spots that I still haven't visited here 
that I really wanted to do this morning. I was kind of saving, again, hoping for some sun. Even though I prefer the sun, this is kind of pretty and very peaceful. It's 6 a.m. on Memorial Day, and the last place I thought I would be is Marion, Indiana, at the birthplace of James Dean on Memorial Day. I spent months and months planning this road trip, but I also wanted to be as flexible and spontaneous as possible. And as a result of all my zigging and zagging and side trips, here I am on Memorial Day morning in Marion, Indiana, completely unplanned. So this is downtown Marion. Look at this cool old city hall or courthouse or something, library. I'm not sure what it is, but it's pretty neat. I'm here in Marion, Indiana, which is just, I think, about 10 miles or so north of Fairmount, Indiana, where James Dean grew up and where he's now buried. This is the site, this is the spot where he was born back in 1931. This used to be this house, which was actually an apartment building. Sadly, the house was torn down, but the site has been um, claimed, I think, probably by the city for this monument and a memorial to where James Dean was born. I didn't know anything about Marion, Indiana until I arrived up here. All these, these little towns, they're just tiny little country farm towns and they're all really quaint and like Mayberry really, like you would expect Mayberry to, to be. And they're all so rich in history. I didn't realize that uh, Jim Davis who created Garfield, the Garfield cartoon character, was also born here in Marion and also grew up not far away in Fairmount, Indiana, just like James Dean did. I mean, how weird is that? And then right across the street over here, I discovered they have a wall of murals of all the famous people who have lived here or were born here or did something historic here. I had no idea that uh, Marion, Indiana, that had so many famous people from here. Did any of you know that? That's the fun thing about road trips is sometimes you just take a little detour or, or, or um, a little side trip or one thing leads to another before you know you've discovered something you know really cool that you had no idea about so and I've discovered lots of those things on this trip and I'll be sharing with sharing those with you over the next few weeks and probably a few months I I visited so many places and I'm not really uploading these videos in order as you've probably noticed if you watch this channel on a regular basis but I decided to be flexible on this trip and I didn't know it was here until I visited the James Dean Gallery and Museum yesterday and talked to the owner, David, and he gave me a map and showed me where this was, and he told me about this, and he's actually the one that had this, this monument created for this site. Now, Dave was saying that he hadn't been over here in a little while and he hasn't cleaned off the, um, the granite, but it looks very clean to me. It looks very nice. I wonder if there's anything on the backside. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it is designed and dedicated. So it was designed and dedicated by David Lohr. So he's the owner of the James Dean Gallery in association with Main Street Marion. With special thanks to Jim and Nedra Sutter, the Community Foundation of Grant County, Grant County Conventions and Visitor Bureau. And you can pause the video if you want to read this. It's just a little bit about his life. I'm standing off to the side just because of the reflection. So if any of you have ever been to Marion, Indiana, if you've been to this monument, James Dean Monument, to this spot, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. So long ago, and yet it seems like just yesterday, doesn't it? Especially if you're a baby boomer, it all goes by way too fast. And did you notice my shirt? I picked this up at um, the James Dean Gallery Museum yesterday. And look at this really cool house just right behind the uh, location here. Yeah, look at this really cool old house. I'm sure 
that it was uh, built at the same time as the other house, the one that got torn down. Looks like the same style, same architecture, same everything. It's too bad. Whoever tore down the house, the apartment building, just probably didn't realize the historical significance. And people who did probably didn't realize it was being torn down until it was too late. Down another historic building that's been, that's no longer here. But at least they have this really nice site. There's the sign here, Birth Site Memorial. Mr. Marion Glenn Allen. Okay, on this side stood the Seven Gables, where James Dean, one of the most charismatic and idolized movie actors of all time, was born. February 8, 1931. Directed by Marion Quarterback Club. Mr. Marion. Hmm. And James Dean even has a star here in front of the uh, the sign and in front of the memorial. James Dean's mother, who died at the young age of 29, is buried in this cemetery here in Marion, not far from the house where James Dean was born. And this is a much larger cemetery, as you can see, than the cemetery in Fairmont. And the Fairmont Cemetery is actually not that small. I mean, it's it's not huge, but it's not a tiny cemetery. But this seems to be quite a bit bigger. This looks like the entrance up here on the right-hand side. My car Casper is definitely feeling his age on this road trip. I've never heard it make so many creaking and squeaking noises before. Okay, there's the office. That's a pretty cool office. I don't see the, a name to the cemetery, though. Oh, there is a map. I wonder if it has anybody listed. So I just looked up uh, James Dean's mother, Mildred Dean, who's buried here in Section F of the cemetery. And it was nice of the uh, cemetery to provide this map, but look how large. You can see how large the cemetery is. Yeah, she's buried up here in Section F. It's a large section, and according to Find a Grave, there's no GPS. So even though there is no GPS, and I'll go ahead and add one when I find her gravesite to the um, Find a Grave Memorial page, it does say on this sign that Mildred Marie Wilson Dean is buried 30 yards west of this plaque. So that's very helpful because section F is a very large section. So let's go see if I can find her grave. It's sprinkling a little bit. It's definitely overcast as you can see, but it's also sprinkling. It's a little bit wet today. Because it does have the plaque right there, as long as you know what section you're in, then it's easy. You just come 30 yards from the plaque to her gravesite. But if you don't have to happen to see the the map of the cemetery and know that she's in section F, you wouldn't be able to find this, or it'd be difficult to find. It's a very large cemetery. It seems especially sad that she died so young. I mean, that was sad for James, but also sad that she never got to see just how famous he became, and also sad that he died so young as his career was just getting started. And he never got to see, he never really got to see either just how famous he became because he became famous after his death. The majority of his fame came after his death. Strange how life works sometimes. And he didn't even live to be old, as old as, as his mom who died at 29. He died at 24. He died five years before she did. But they both died so young. It's a nice location. It's kind of lively, which I think is, for me, I, I like lively cemeteries. I mean, they're kind of nice when they're peaceful too, but I kind of prefer cemeteries where there's a lot of people around, a lot of things going on, and life continues. It just seems more, doesn't seem as sad to me. 
I guess that's why I like visiting cemeteries. I like when there's a lot of people around. It just seems nice when uh, cemeteries are just a part of life and not these sad places that are remote where no one goes. So I just added a GPS to Mildred Marie Dean's final resting place. But before I hop back on the highway and head to my next destination, since it's Memorial Day, I'm going to make one more stop at Park Cemetery where James Dean is buried and show you one more gravesite there. Richard Wayne Wood served in Vietnam and died on August 12, 1971. He's buried just a few rows away from James Dean, and like Dean, he also died at the age of 24. Famous or not, every grave has a story to tell. So thank you, Richard, for your service. You may be gone, but you haven't been forgotten. If you like today's video, you might also enjoy one of the other videos shown here. And if you'd like to be alerted when I upload my next video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. And in case you don't recognize the skyline there, it's Indianapolis, Indiana. And now that I'm leaving Indiana, it looks like the sun has finally decided to come out.